Well, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back, and I've got an interesting video for you. Today, I want to talk about the most effective, simplest to make alcohol burning stove that I know of. Is it the penny can stove? Nope. Is it the Arizona penny t can stove? Nope. Is it the Bud Light alcohol stove? Nope. These guys work good. They really do. But in my opinion, they're not the simplest to make. They take too much time to make too many tools involved in making those stoves. Is it the fancy feast alcohol stove? Maybe, but I'm gonna say no. Why do I not want to use the fancy feast stove? Because it, you have to cut the tomato paste can. So you have to have, you gotta eat cat food first of all, and tomato paste, right? If you haven't seen my video, go check it out, it's really funny. Um, and the thing that I don't like about these is you have to cut this tomato paste can down to get the one inch sweet spot here, okay? Because these, you can see these tomato paste cans are too tall. So you have to have some sort of knife or scissors or something to cut that down to that length, which means right down here, you got to cut it right down here somewhere. Well, they work good. They're excellent stoves. These are, they're very simple. But I found something that I like better. I don't know what to call it. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with this. But I'm going to just call this the Vienna stove. Okay. So we have a can of Vienna sausages. Right. And we still use our tomato paste can. Now what's cool about this is you take your can opener. You open the top of the paste, you get the paste out, you cut the bottom of the can off, and then you end up with something like this, right? Then you take a hole punch, you punch two holes on the bottom and two holes on the top, very close to the rim, right? You could do two holes, you could do three holes or four. It doesn't matter how many holes that you use or how many holes you punch in there. It really doesn't. Because on the bottom, the only purpose that the holes serve is to allow fuel to flow into the wick of the stove. Okay, so you know you could if you want to look fancy, you could do four holes, like I'm doing here. But technically, I've made these stoves where I've only put one hole, and they work just fine. I've done them with three holes; they work just fine. We're gonna do four holes just for just for fun, right? got these holes in the can. You don't have to cut anything. So what you do is you take your Vienna sausages and you stick your tomato paste can right down in the top just like that. And look at this. You have the one inch sweet spot. No cutting required. If you don't have these hole punches, don't worry about it. Use the blade of your knife. Use a screw that you find, a nail, a rock, okay? Very easy if you're in a survival situation and you want a hole in this can, you're going to find a way to do it. And it's going to be a simple, primitive way. So you don't have to carry this kind of stuff around. You don't have to carry these guys around. There's ways to get this done. Now you need some sort of wicking material. Just like the fancy feast stove, they've got a wicking type material that goes around the can here. You need that. The wick is important. The wick, what the wick does is when the fuel goes down, it'll get down into them holes and it'll travel up into the wick. And then you light the stove right around this area. And that's how it burns. The cool thing about these stoves, before I get too deep into talking about wicks, 
The reason I like this Vienna stove over the Fancy Feast stove is the Fancy Feast will hold about three ounces of fuel. The Vienna stove holds four and a half ounces, so you get another ounce and a half of fuel, which means longer run time. And these stoves will burn a wide variety of fuels. Wicks can be just about anything that is a natural type material that will wick fluid through. One of my favorite things is just napkins. And that's your wick right there. What you want to do is you want to measure, you want the wick to be the same height as the can here, as the Vienna can. So you look right here and you see the top ring right here. So you're just going to take these and fold them around so that they're that height right there. And then you just you keep putting them around. And if you make them too long, too high, don't worry about it. What will happen with the wick naturally is it will burn itself down to this height it'll naturally burn itself down to the correct height over time. So don't worry if your wick gets a little too long. Don't worry about it. Just run some wicking material around. I'll talk a little more here in a second about different options of wicking materials. Okay, just something like this. It's not that difficult to make one of these. When you get enough wicking material around this can, you want to put the two pieces together, just like that, and you're finished. If you've got too long of a wick, rip that stuff off. It's not that big of a deal. I know this looks very crude, right? But it's okay. It's going to burn into the correct place, and it's going to be exactly what it needs to be on its own. If you want to pack this down a little bit, you can but you don't really need to so that's what we have we've got the wicking material outside of the outside of the uh, tomato paste can in the Vienna can okay I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up with fuel and the fuel that I'm using today is denatured alcohol if you don't have denatured alcohol that's okay get you a yellow bottle of heat in the automotive section of the store if you can't find either of those get you 91 percent isopropyl alcohol it'll work it's not the best fuel in the world, but it will work in a pit. If you're going to be using anything uh, less concentrated than that, you're going to have a lot of soot on your pan. So if you use like 70%, it's going to be, uh, it'll, it'll light right up because it's a wick type stove, but it'll take time to get that thing going. Now I put fuel in there, and you can already see that the wick is saturated with fuel. How do we light it? very simple we just light the wick and let it go I'm gonna let that burn down here for a little bit while I'm talking about wicking materials again I use just napkins very simple napkins work good if you have cotton cloth that works good you can wrap cotton cloth around it old pairs of jeans works good as a wick if you go to the uh, Go find like the uh, the yarn and stuff like that and find some cotton yarn. Wrap that stuff around there. Cotton rope. Paper towels. Blue shop towels. These things work good. Old t-shirts that are cotton. Don't use polyester because polyester will melt. You don't want to do that. If you want to use, in some cases, 4 out steel wool has been used as a wicking material. Works okay. Um, if you want to use carbon felt. This works very good. This is, this is carbon felt that, that a lot of people use, like plumbers, when they're going to braze uh, copper lines and they put this between the wall and the line that, they're, that they have their torch on. This stuff works good. This is cotton felt. Okay, this stuff works good for a wick. Cotton balls. If you go to the beauty section, you buy cotton rounds. Those work good. All of these things are excellent for wicking materials. If you don't have any of this stuff at your disposal, go with a natural material. 
make you some natural cordage. This is made from palm leaves. That works as a wick. This is made from a yucca plant. This is all cordage that I've made. This is made from um, just field grass. So you can use this. Just wrap these around the can. And I'm talking if you're in a pure survival situation, use this. Any kind of natural material that comes from the earth can be used as a wick. Okay? If you find bark, it, the, you find a cottonwood tree and you find that inner bark, wrap that around and that will work. It's very, very simple. Now one of the things that's very cool about these stoves is the fact that you do not need a pot support. You don't have to have three rocks to set your pot on. You don't have to have wire to make one of these guys, although you can, but you'd have to make it a little taller. Probably have to make it about four and a half inches tall. You don't need a pot support system for this stove. That's one of the beauties of it. That's why I like it so much. And you can see how well it's working. How do you put it out when you're done cooking? You smother it. Fire needs three elements to burn. It needs heat, it needs oxygen, and it needs fuel. So we still have heat and we still have fuel, but we've eliminated the oxygen. Anytime you take that fire triangle and you remove one of those three elements, the fire goes out. It will extinguish itself. Okay, it's very easy to light this back up. It's a very, very effective stove. So that's how we put it out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick boil test and I'm going to show you how effective this stove is. I have 16 ounces of water. This is half a liter. Okay, this is two cups of water. On the bottom of my pot here, you can see that there's a small recess and that recess corresponds to the stove. And you notice when the stove, when the pot is sitting on top of the stove, I have that one inch sweet spot. That's where the flame is the most effective. And it's such a, such a fun thing. Let's pour that water in here. And just for the sake of the video, I'm going to boil this water uncovered. I'm not going to cover it. I'm going to make the test a little bit harder. Okay, let's set that timer right up here. Hopefully you can see that. We'll start the time. Let's get this baby set down. Right there. Let's start the time and let's see how long it takes to boil two cups of water. Pretty crazy. This is a very effective stove one of my favorites by far it's so simple to use so simple to make and it costs nothing you know whether you choose to do a fancy feast stove and you choose to cut that tomato paste down because it has to be shorter if you're really packing light and you want something small three ounces of fuel it'll still run for quite a while but personally I like the Vienna stove I think it's a I think it's the best one out there We've got the flame coming right out the wick, right underneath the, the pot. And as your stove gets burnt more and more, that wick will naturally find itself in the right spot. It'll, it'll find itself in the right position. The material will melt or burn to the right size over time. So it's not like it's almost impossible to build these incorrectly. I'm already seeing light bubbles and stuff. We're two minutes in. You can take you a little fuel bottle like this, Trangia bottle, full of fuel. This thing works good. You just put the fuel in there and then give it a couple minutes to come to, for the fuel to moisten the wick and you'll be able to tell because the wick will change it'll look different right now the wick is dry but you give that a couple minutes for that fuel to work its way up then the next thing you know the wick will be wet and then from there 
you can light it. It just takes a second to let it work its way up. We're approaching the three minute mark and this this water is starting to show signs. This wick is ready to light. And that's what it is. Produces a very nice hot flame. Cool thing about the wick is you have a tiny bit of insulation between your fingers and that heat. Now once this thing gets burning for a while like this one here in the background this will get hot and you won't be able to hold it. But right now it's not bad at all. Another thing that I really like about these is they're very easy they're very easy stoves to manage. They're very light very simple. There we go, now we're out. We're four minutes in. Still counting up. I have a very light boil. We're at a boil, four and a half minutes. Let me stop the time and show you. Look at that, four and a half minutes in and we're already at a heavy rolling boil. Very effective. That is such a nice stove. You could be out in the, in the woods heating up water for your ramen noodles, heating up water for your coffee, heating up your water, purifying your water, cooking stew, whatever it is you're making, you could be doing that silently so you're not scaring off all the animals. They're very easy to conserve the fuel on. You just come over here. Put that baby out, give it a couple minutes. Make sure it's out. There you go. It's not even hot to the touch. And that's what it looks like. And that was about as sloppy a stove I've ever made. But it was effective. Four and a half minutes we boiled that water. I like these because the amount of water that you can boil and the burn time, the amount of fuel that this stove will carry, that extra ounce and a half of fuel makes a big difference when you're cooking something. And don't think for one second that these stoves don't have enough power to cook a real meal, because they do. I've cooked, I've sauteed mushrooms and, and thrown eggs in there, scrambled eggs and mushrooms, had cheese. I've made uh, plenty of coffee and stews, heat up all kinds of things and it's a very very effective stove so no matter how fun these guys are they're a much much more difficult stove to make and the aluminum on these cans is thin these guys are a lot more thicker aluminum they're a thicker can they're easier to make highly effective and you saw the the boil time four and a half minutes for 16 ounces of of, of uh, water that's pretty significant you might be wondering how long does a burner like this or a stove like this last on a single filling of fuel I'll have to test that I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 minutes they do last a long time the only downside to them is there's no flame control, so it's just on or off. I just dumped out all the fuel that was in there and I put it back in my Trangia fuel bottle. And I lit the stove to burn off the residual fuel that's in there. And you'll see, as this burns, it's going to make that wick closer to the size that it really needs to be. These stoves burn a wide variety of fuels. In fact, I'm working on a video series, a whole playlist, using all kinds of different fuels with these stoves, showing you how versatile they are. Once it gets down below the Vienna can, once it burns flush, it doesn't really burn down. It stays a good wick. This stove here, I've been using this one a long time and it's still on the original wick and even in the event where you need to replace the wick it's very simple if you have a real big pot of water 
you could set two or three of these down and put your big pot on two or three of these and get more firepower, more BTUs. This wick is starting to really take shape. It's really starting to be what it needs to be. And it does it automatically. You can see that the wick is really starting to take shape of to what it's supposed to be. It's out of fuel and it's about to burn out and that's what we want on this first initial burn. We want to create, we want the wick to make itself the right height that it needs to be and the more we use them the more that process happens. As soon as this thing goes out I'll fire it back up and show you how well it works with the wick being trimmed, so to speak. If you need to move it, you can stick a poker in here and move it around. It's almost out. It's just burning off the stuff that was inside the can, the coating, that's what it's burning off now. Okay, this stove is officially out. Bring it up here, you can see the wick has adjusted itself to the right length that it needs to be. Still a little warm to the touch. If you look inside, you can see some of the residual coating that was on the inside of the can left over. That stuff will just burn off in time. Um, if you want to take, like this little stick that I'm holding, you want to get that stuff out, you can. It'll pour out. It's just that junk that came out of the can. All that junk. And you can see the wick is definitely the right size now. So from here, if we refill it, by the time you get this filled up, the wick will have already saturated enough fuel to light it if you're going to fill it up all the way. You can see the liquid saturating out of the side. So let me get this alcohol out of the way. We're going to reset our timer because I'd really like to see how long this baby will last. Let's start our time. Now we'll See how long it burns. It's getting really low on fuel, so I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to run out here at any moment. And this one lasted 30 minutes. So folks, I want to say thank you for joining me today on this video on what I call the Vienna stove. This is my favorite one by a long shot. So easy to make so easy to make so effective I mean it's just boiling this water like like nobody's business the cool thing is again is you can set your pot right on it it's strong enough you know these these cans are not made out of aluminum these are tin cans right They're out of metal now of course the Vienna sausage cans are made out of aluminum but that's okay so if you throw a couple of these in your truck in the back and you get in a pinch get in a survival situation, you have food, you have even more food, it's not, eating tomato paste probably not the best thing in the world to eat, but when you're trying to find energy, and you're trying to find some sort of nutrients, you're going to be really happy eating this. And then, you need to boil some water to purify some water to stay hydrated. There's, your, there's one stove, there's two stoves right there. So I hope you got some good useful information out of this video. Please feel free to leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. And once again, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a beautiful day. We'll see you next time. Now go out there and make you a Vienna stove. You won't be disappointed. They're highly effective.
Talk to you later.